very good morning to Miss Janatun and to everyone who is watching our forum. We are very blessed today to be gathered online and to be able to witness a forum about the importance of democracy and minority rights in Malaysia. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Chok Wai. Good morning. Good morning to Ms. Janato and to everyone. My name is Yashin. Before we introduce our panel, let us think about what is democracy and minority rights. As we all know, democracy in Malaysia take place in the framework of a federal representative, democratic institutional monarchy in which the young people to Agong of head of state and the prime minister of Malaysia is the head of government. The constitution of Malaysia is codified and the system of government is based on the Westminster system. The hierarchy of authority in Malaysia in accordance to the federal constitution stipulates the three branches administrative component of the Malaysian government as a consisting to the executive, judiciary, and the legislative branch. Various the parliament consists of the Dewan Negara Upper House Senate and Dewan Rakyat Lower House House of Representatives. Malaysia has had a multi-party system since the first legal Native Council of Malaya in 1955 on the first pass of the post species. Thanks to our moderator, Chow. Meanwhile, the minority rights are individual and collective rights through which people belonging to national minority groups are entitled to enjoy their own culture, to use their own language, to profess and practice their own religion, to have the right to freedom of expression and assembly, to have equal opportunities to education and employment, and to enjoy full participation in public life. Minority rights are part of the general human rights framework and must be protected through national legislation, appropriate government policies, and the support of civil society. Okay, so these are the introduction of our topic for today. Let's introduce our panels to the audience, starting from our panel one. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to Ms. Janatun um, and to all my group, mem group members and classmates. My name is Hari. Uh, good afternoon and to Ms. Ms. Janatun and everyone. I'm Putri Anasuraya. Hi, good morning, Ms. Janatun and my fellow friends and my classmates. My name is Muhammad Shami Ben A very good afternoon, Ms. Janatun. My name is Joel Avinish. Yeah. Thank you, dear panels, for introducing yourself. So, everyone here knows that I would like to hear information about Sorry. So, I would like to hear some information about the politics in Malaysia. Let's start with Harris. Thank you for the question, moderator. So, I'll share about the political topic. Malaysia has had a multi-party system since the first direct election of the Federal Legis Legislative Council of Malaya in 1955, of first passed the post the basis. The ruling party was the Alliance Party. In Malay, we called it Parti Perikatan. Coalition and from 1973 onwards, its successor, the Barisan National, National Front Coalition. Together with its pre predecessor, the Barisan National Government served for 61 years and was one of the world's longest serving governments until it lost power to Pakatan Harapan coalition in the 14th general election that was held on 9th May 
the pakatan arapan ph coalition currently consists of democratic action party which is dap and national uh, people's justice party which is pkr and national trust party which is amana with sabha heritage party powasan and united progressive kinabalu organization upk ho supko as confidence and supply partner the coalition governed the country from 10 may 2018 until 24th february 2020 when tun dr mahadev mohammed resigned as prime minister of malaysia while the opposition is predominantly made up of national front which is bn pan malaysian islamic party pas sarawak parties alliance gps sabah united alliance gbs sarawak united party psb and other small parties malaysia practices parliamentary democracy with constitution constitutional monarchy this majesty the king is the head of state parliament is the most important institution in a country which practices the principles of democracy parliament of malaysia consisting of the senate and the house representatives held its first meeting on 11 september 1959 House of Rep- Representatives has 222 elected members of each members represent as a parliamentary constitution seat. <coughs> Sorry. A general election is held every 5 years to elect members members of House of Representatives. Parties with the most if elected members can form a federal government. to rule the country to be eligible as a member a person must be a malaysian citizen be not less than 18 years old be of sound mind not be an undischarged bankrupt and not at the same time be a member of both house very member before taking this seat in the house of representative must take the prescribed oath before the speaker I would like to give opportunity to let the panels explain in details on the important events which leads to parliamentary democracy in Malaysia. Paris, do you want to proceed? Haha. First of all, thank you for the question, Miss Moderator. In 1867, the Straits Settlement Legislative Council was established following the transfer of the Straits Settlement Penang, Singapore, and Melaka, from the English Indian, from the in- English East Indian Com- India Company to Colonial Office, the Legislative Council was the first in- institution in the country which had debates and discussions which showed, which, which shows the characteristic of modern Parliament. In 1896, independent Malay states of Perak, Selangor, Pahang, and Negeri Sembilan. entered into co- confederation collectively known as the Federal Malay States FMS this was a significant development as a foundation was laid for the eventual adoption of the federal system of government for the entire country like we have today <clears throat> there was no legislative body to formulate and regulate laws for the four states as a whole before the the federation the respective states council in the four states continued to pass legislation in respect of their own states so next uh, i know uh, in 
a central legislative body known as the Federal Council was established along parliamentary line for the four federated Malay states. The Federal Council was a nominated assembly with 30 members, including the ruler of the four federated Malay states, the resident general, four British residents, and four unofficial members. The formation of the council was one step toward parliamentary democratic system of the government. In 1927, the ruler from the Federated Middle State withdrew from the Federal Council. The restructuring of the Federal Council changed its membership to 13 official members and 11 unofficial members. The Federal Council was the only nominated body until the outbreak of the Second World War II in December 1941. 1942, the Japanese occupation from 1942 to 1945 caused the suspension of all constitutional development, but at the same time, it brought about political consciousness among the, the, among the people. Now to the next one, Ritesha. Thank you, Aina. So let me start with my point. Okay, in 1946, an advisory council was formed and had 13 members representing the Malay states and two straight settlements, which is Malacca and Penang. Meanwhile, the British tried to unite the three system of administration, which is Federated Malay State or FMS, under Federated Malay States straight settlement at Malacca and Penang through the Malayan Union. The Malayan Union was greatly opposed by the Malay led by Dato On Jaffa, who was the president of United Malay National Organization, or we call AMNO. It was felt that the Malayan Union would deprive the Malay rulers of their sovereign, sovereignty. In 1948, Resistance against the Malayan Union result in the Federation of Legislative Council was <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, in 1948, resistance against the Malayan Union result in the Federation of Malayan Agreement in 1948. The Federal Legislative Council was established, which replaced the Federal Council at the federal level. The Federal Legislative Council consists of 75 members, three ex officio, 11 from the Malay states and the straight settlement, 11 British officials, and 50 unofficial members. This was the first time the Legislative Council had two thirds unofficial majority. The agreement was another step taken by the British to formulate the basic principles of a government with Parliament. Next, I would like to let you all proceed. All right, thank you, Panel Shami. Okay, in 1951, a member system which was the forerunner of the prison cabinet system was introduced. Members were entrusted with several portfolios under their charge. In 1952, the Malay rulers presented an official mace to the council. The mace symbolizes the supreme authority and prestige of the council. In 1953, the British High Commissioner ceased to preside over the council. In his place, a speaker was appointed. The first speaker of the Federal Legislative Council was Dato Sir Mahmoud bin Mat. In 1955, the Federal Legislative Council established under the Federation of Malaya Agreement was dissolved to make way for a general election. This marked the first time that the people of Malaya went to the 
polls to elect their representatives to the Federal Legislative Council. In the first general elections, the alliance which were United Malays, United Malays National Organization, which is AMNO, Malaysian Chinese Association, which is MCA, and Malaysian Indian Congress, which is MIC, won 51 out of 52 seats contested. Tunku Abdul Rahman Putra was appointed the first chief minister of the Federation of Malaya and thereby formed his first cabinet. Members of the Federal Legislative Council were increased to 98 members. 52 elected members replaced 50 unofficial members. 35 nominated members represent, re represented various interests the remaining 11 was made up of chief ministers of the nine Malay states and one representative each from Pinning and Malacca. This even was a significant progress towards achieving parliamentary democracy in the nation. I will now pass to panel one, Harris. Thank you, Jal. In 1956, Tunku Abdul Rahman Putra, the Chief Minister of the Federation of Malay, Malaya, led an independence mission to London to ask the British to grant the independence to Malaya. The British government agreed to give Malaya complete self-government. In 1957, a constitution for a fully independent and sovereign Malaya was drawn up by an independent body of distinguished jurists from several Commonwealth countries, headed by Lord Reed. The federal constitution was unanimously adopted by the Federal Legislative Council, and it was decided that parliamentary democracy based on the Westminster model was best for the country. Tunku Abdul Rahman was appointed as the first Prime Minister of Malaya, and his cabinet consisted of 12 members. On 31st August 1957, independence was declared at Merdeka Stadium. The Federal Legis Legislative Council remained uh, un par parliament until its dissolution in June 1959. Tunku Abdul Rahman, with his first cabinet after independence, seated from left to right, Abdul Aziz Ishak, VT Sambatan, Dato Abdul Razak Hussein, Tun Abdul Rahman, H. S. Lee, Sulaiman Dato Abdul Rahman, and Sadan Haji Zubir standing from left to right, Ong Yok Yin, Abdul Rahman Talib, Muhammad uh, Ker Johari, Tan Siu Sin, and Bahman Samsudin. <laughs> With the achievement of independence on 31st August 1957, the nation had for their first time, a head of state, the late His Majesty Tuanku Abdul Rahman Ibn Almarhum Tuanku Muhammad. In accordance with the provisions of, of the federal constitution, His Majesty the King is constitutional monarch chosen from among the Malay rulers by the Conference of Rulers. So I'll pass it to panel number two, Aina. Uh, thank you, Harris. Uh, in 1959, the first general election was held. A bicameral parliament was formed, which constituted of His Majesty the King, the Senate, and the House of Representatives. Opening of first parliament by His Majesty the, the first King Tunku Abdul Rahman Ibn Almarhum Tunku Muhammad at Tunku Abdul Rahman Hall. Jalan Ampang, the first meeting of the first session of the first parliament, took place at Tunku Abdul Rahman Hall, Jalan Ampang. His Majesty the King officially opened the first parliament on 11 September 1959. The House of Representatives, which consisted of 104 elected members, convened for the first time a day earlier. The Senate 
consists of 38 nomi nominated members to had a first meeting a day earlier. The occasion saw the beginning of parliamentary democracy in newly independent country first parliament meeting at Tunku Abdul Rahman Hall on 11 September 1959. In 1961, the proposal to merge Mali with Singapore, Sarawak and Sabah by Tunku Abdul Rahman was approved by the House of Representatives on 11 October 1961. Tunku Abdul Rahman and the Prime Minister of Great Britain held a meeting in London to discuss the formation of Malaysia. The British were very much in favor of the formulation of Malaysia. Okay, back to panel number two, Shah. Yeah, so thank you, panel number two, Aina. So here we go. In 1962, the Cobalt Commission, led by Lord Cobalt, was entrusted with the task of holding a referendum in Sabah and Sarawak to determine whether the people of those two states supported the proposal to create the Federation of Malaysia, consisting of Malaya, Singapore, Sabah, and Sarawak. The report, start, the report stated the majority of the people in the two states agreed to the proposal and the report of the Cobalt Commission was accepted. In 1963, the Federation of Malaya, United Kingdom and the Northern Ireland, Singapore, Sabah and Sarawak agreed to the terms of Malaysia agreement. The state, the state legislatures in Singapore, Sabah and Sarawak passed resolution enabling the establishment of Malaysia. Malaysia was declared on 16 September 1963. The House of Representatives at the time at that time consists of 195 members, 104 from Peninsula Malaysia, 16 from Sabah and 24 from Sarawak and 15 from Singapore. The Senate comprised of 50 members. 28 members represent the 14 state legislatures and 22 members were nominated by His Majesty the King. His Majesty the Third King, Tuan Ku Sheikh Putra Ibn al Maru Sheikh Hassan Jamal Al, officially the Parliament complex near the Lake Perdana on 2 November 1963. The first Parliament was dissolved on 1 March 1964 and the second general election was held on 25 April 1964. Following the continuous redelination of the constituency by the Election Commission, the number of seats in the House of Representatives had increased up to 222 seats in the 12th Parliament. Move to moderator, Ms. Moderator Chok. Okay, thank you. Um, great to hear all the history Great to hear about the history of our country from the panel. Mm. By the mm. way, let's move on with minority rights. Harris, can you explain to the guests why are the minority rights important to this country? Thank you for the question, Chok, moderator, as the moderator. So, as we all know, minority rights are important because it will protect our identity and prevents forced assimilation and the loss of cultures, religions, and languages, the basis of richness of the world, and therefore parts of its heritage. Minority rights are about ensuring respect for distinctive identities while ensuring that any differential treatments towards, the, towards groups or persons belonging to such groups does not mask discriminatory practices and policies. Therefore, positive action is required to respect other culture, religious, and linguistic diversity, and acknowledge that minorities enrich society through this diversity. Uh, next, moderator number two, Yashin. Thank you, Haris. Next, my question for the panel is how the minority rights is being protected? To panel Thank Aina. you for the question, sir, moderator. So the protection of minority rights is an exercise of tolerance and intercultural dialogue by encouraging the mutual respect and understanding the different group that comp comprise a society should be able to engage and cooperate with 
one another while preserving their own identity. The basic element required for the realization of this goal are to promote knowledge of minority culture, history, language, and religion in any intercultural perspective. In other words, the protection of minority rights can promote an inclusive, peaceful, and cohesive society with respect for diversity. Now, go back to moderator one shot. Thank you, Aina, for sharing your great information. So let's move on with the next question. I would like to ask our panel, Shami, what are the challenges faced by the minorities in Malaysia? I would like to pass this question to panel Shami. Okay, since there's a technical issue, um, let's pass to our moderator, Yashin, shall we? Thank you, Shami, for the information. So here's my question for panel Joe. What is minority according to the UN? Panel Joe? Yes, uh, moderator Yashin, I'm here. Uh, thank you, Moderator Yashin. Thank you for your question as well. In practice, minorities are considered as religion, culture, or linguistics group living among a majority group. For example, in Malaysia, the majority group is Malay. The interplay between race and religion is a sensitive issue in Malaysia where ethnic Malay Muslims form about 60% of the population and Buddhists, Christians, Hindus and Sikhs, Sikhs make up the bulk of the ethnic Indian and Chinese minorities. In Malaysia, it is important to respect and understand how multicultural works because it establishes a strong structure for Malaysia politics. An understandable perspective of minority rights builds a strong political structure and it stabilizes the economy. Thank you, Moderator Yashin. Thank you again for your information to our panel, Joe. So there are laws which are stated in the federal constitution regarding to the protection of special rights for, the, for all the panels. We are contained in Article 153 to panel Harris. Thank you for the question, um, Mr. Moderator. Let me start with one. It shall be the responsibility of the young Dipotan Agong to safeguard the special position of the Mal Malays and natives of any of the states of Sabah and Sarawak and the le leg legitimate entrance of the communities in accordance with provisions of the, this article. Notwithstanding anything in the constitution, but subject to the provision of article 40 and of this article, Yang Dipertuan Agong shall exercise his function under this constitution and federal law in such manner and may be necessary to safeguard the special provision of the Malay and natives of any, any of the states, Sabah and Sarawak, and to ensure the reservation for Malays and natives of the state Sabah and Sarawak of such proportion as he may deem reasonable of position in the public service. And of course, the scholarships, exhibition, and other similar educational or training privileges of special facilities given or accorded by the federal government and with any permit or license of the operation of any trade or business is required by the federal law then subject to the provision of the law and this article of such permits and license. Next, I'll pass it to and number three. Okay, sorry. 
And number three, the young department are going made to ensure in accordance with clause number two, the reservation to Malay and native of any of the state of Sabah and Sarawak opposition in the public service or and of scholarship, exhibition, and other educational or training privilege or special facilities give such general direction as may be required for that purpose to any commission to which part as apply or to any authority charge responsibility for the grant of such scholarship, exhibition, or other educational or training privilege or special specialty and the commission or authority shall do like comply with the direction. Number four, they're exercising his function under this constitution and federal law in accordance with clause number one to number three, the young Dipatuan Agung should not deprive any person of any public office held by him or of the continuance of any scholarship exhibition or other educational or training privilege or special facility enjoyed by him. And then to panel number three, Shah. So, in number five, this article does not derogate from the provision of article 136. Point number six, whereby existing federal law, a permit or license is required for the operation of any trade or business, the young Dipodon Agong may exercise his functions under that law in such manner or give such general direction to any authority judged under the law with the grant of such permits or licenses as may be required to ensure the reservation of such proportion of such permits or license for Malays and native of any of the states of Sabah and Sarawak as the young Dibaton Agung may deem reasonable and the authority shall duly comply with the direction. Number seven. Nothing in this article shall operate, shall operate the deprive or alter, authorize the deprivation of any person of any right, privilege, permit, or license accrued to the or enjoy or held by him, or to authorize the refusal to renew. <coughs> Sorry. The sign of a person, any permit, or license when the renewal or grant might reasonably be expected in the ordinary course or event. Next, we move to panel number four, which is Joel. Okay, thank you, uh, panel number three, Mohamed Chami. Okay, so let's move on with uh, number eight. Notwithstanding anything in this constitution, whereby any federal law, any permit or license is required for the operation of any trade or business. That law may provide for the reservation of a proportion of such permits or license for Malays and natives of any of the state of Sabah and Sarawak. But no such law shall for the purpose of ensuring such reservation as a deprived or authorize the deprivation, the deprivation of any person of any right, privilege, permit, or license accrued to or enjoy, enjoyed or held by him. B. Authorize a refusal to renew to any person any such permit or license or a refusal to grant to their hex, heirs, success, successes or assigns of any person, any permit or license when the renewal or grant or grant might in accordance with the other provisions of the law reasonably be expected in the ordinary course of events or prevent any person from transferring together with his business any transferable license to operate that business or C, where no permit or license was previously required for the operation of the trade or business. Authorize a refusal 
to grant a permit or license to any person for the operation of any trade or business which immediately before the coming into force of the law he had been born he had been born fight fit carrying on or authorize a refusal subsequently to renew to any such person any permit or license or a refusal to grant to their heirs heirs successors or assigns of any such person any such permit or license when the renewal or grant might in accordance with the other provisions of that law reasonably be expected in the ordinary course of events i would like to move to panel number 1 aris i will continue with 9 nothing in this article shall empower parliament to restrict business or trade solely for the purpose of re reservations for malays and natives of any of the states of sabah and sarawak the constitution of the state of any ruler may make provision corresponding with the necessary modifications to the provision of this article i will move on with moderator number 2 yashin thank you for a detail from all our panels so there is one example of a party that represented minority rights which is called mira can you explain the further details for this particular party panel number 1 haris the minority rights action party or malay party tindakan hak minority mira is a political party in malaysia the party was initially registered as new generation party or party generasi baru among the latest 20 new parties registration approved by the register of society in 2013 so i'll move on to panel number 2 i know Okay, a uh, new gen party was founded by former Malaysian Indian Congress and Parti Keadilan Rakyat leader S. Gobi Krishan, who aimed for youth with age under 50 years old and qualification about Sijil Pelajar Malaysia for membership. New gen, new gen party being the first Indian Malaysian national bilingual and multi, uh, multiracial party hoped to join Pakatan Harapan to represent Indian community in Malaysia. And then back to Shah. Uh, I'm sorry, I have a line problem right now. Uh, sorry. On 31st March 2017, New Jain Party applied to change it to name Party Bebas Rasa or PBR. The Secretary General, which is S. Gobi Krishnan, announced several new appointments, including former PKR, United Malaysian National Organization, or we call AMNO, and Malaysia United Indigenous Party member, Muhammad Eza Muhammad No, as the new president and former Batu Kawan AMNO Deputy Head, and PPBM member, Hairuddin Abu Hassan, and the new Deputy President. Next, we move to Joel. Thank you, panel number three, Shami. Uh, okay. However, the application ran into controversies, leading Hazam Khairuddin to resign from New Gen Party, a group comprising the former MIC Secretary Generals G. Kumar Harman, Jeeva Kumar, and Zaini Jaffa, tried to impersonate as a party members and officials by misusing. party letter head but was exposed rose ros rose found that g kumar harman is not party member and has misappropriated party funds i would like to move it to panel number 2 haina uh thank you uh, under a new president a raja retinam the new gen party was renamed to minority rights asian action party and was officially accepted as strategic partner of Pakatan Harapan in 2017 and back to moderator to Yasin 
thank you for your detail so much. Thank you for your so much detail from our panels. Next to our moderator, Chok. So, um, thank you for the information, dear panels. Um, I would like to um, return to the previous question where I want to ask Shami about what are the challenges faced by the minorities in Malaysia. Shami, can you further explain um, on that particular topics? Uh, yeah, sure. But first of all, I need to apologize to you all because I had a line problem just now, so I missed my points. So here we go. Uh, thank you, Miss Moderator, for your question. This is the challenge that minorities face in Malaysia. Firstly, there are few major aspects of challenges that are faced by the minorities, which is the economy, education, and the real estate or property. The minorities in Malaysia are among the Malay and indigenous, while the main minorities are Chinese, Indian, and others. As we all know that, even though there are majority groups that is in the workplace, they are not the one who conquer the economy in Malaysia, will they? Most of them were contributed by the minorities too. Some of the minority are hardworking enough to perform well in their workplace compared to others, where they had exceeded the majority. From the aspect of education, there is a quota system in government university. For an example, UITM has the highest percentage of Malay students compared to the other races. For me, this is a type. <coughs> sorry, for me, this is a type of the type of oppression that minorities face in Malaysia that made by the government. Next, we have the real estate on which we can call property ownership. There is a certain limitation to the non-Malaysian or non-Peribumi or the minority to own the properties. The government allows the Malays to have a higher opportunity to own more properties compared with the others. So we can see that, that this is the inequality that happened in our country. I hope this is not will be continued. Thank you, Shami, for your information. So as a summary, we have to learn the importance of mutual respect and understanding, right? Um, especially when we are living in a multiracial country like Malaysia. So I think that's all for today's forum. I want to thank every panel and every guest to come and watch our forum till the end. In conclusion, as a citizen, we must know everyone has their right no matter the majority or minority group. No per person shall violate the rights that are already given by them. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. Talk, 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 talk.